Several months ago, I reviewed the Ducky Mecha Mini and the 12SF, which are both really solid choices for production keyboards. Since then, the 65% layout has become my favorite form factor, and I've been patiently waiting for Ducky to combine these two keyboards. At long last, they've finally done it with their new Ducky Mecha SF Radiant series. There are currently two different limited edition colorways, Ocean and Emerald. They each retail for $159 on mechanicalkeyboards.com and are going to be limited to only 2,020 pieces worldwide, with each keyboard bearing a unique number. Today, we're going to be unboxing and reviewing the Ocean Edition. Has Ducky fallen behind with their newest launch, or is this the keyboard we've all been waiting for? Let's go ahead and get started. Inside the box, you have a dust cover, the Mecha SF itself, some product documentation, nine additional accent keycaps, a Ducky branded wired keycap puller, and a rubber Type-C USB cable with a Ducky branded cable strap. That's it for the contents of the box, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the new Mecha SF. Here it is, and this thing is an absolute beauty. Honestly, the pictures don't do it any justice. The iridescent finish on the aluminum casing is something special. It definitely gives this keyboard custom vibes. The keycaps here are also very unique. I'll be the first to say that this wasn't my first choice for color schemes, but I can definitely appreciate how bold and vibrant the colors are. There's a total of four different keycap color combinations on this one keyboard. These keycaps are made from double shot PBT. The legends won't fade and won't develop shine over time. They're more along the smooth side of the spectrum with just a hint of texture, but they feel fantastic. Unlike the keycaps on the original Mecha Mini or 12SF, these aren't shine through and don't feature the front print for the additional keys that you can access with the FN key. Lucky for me, this is like my 10th Ducky board, so I'm pretty familiar with the arrangement of the secondary keys. But if you're not, don't worry. It's really easy to learn, and I would trade a full-size keyboard for this compact design any day. That brings me to my first issue with this keyboard. Just like the 12SF, the Mecha SF shares the uncommon 2U right shift key. This severely limits your choices for replacement keycap options. If you're still looking to swap keycaps, you should also keep in mind that the right alt and FN keys are 1U and the row height for the three productivity keys are also non-standard. Regardless, these keycaps are really high quality. With my calibers, I measured an average wall thickness of 1.25 millimeters, which is right in line with the keycaps on good production keyboards. The keycaps also fit very snug on the switch stems. There's minimal keycap wobble and the centering is superb. Now let's go ahead and talk about those switches. Because I love heavy linear switches, I opted for the Cherry MX Blacks. Currently, the Mecha SF is only offered in Cherry MX Switch variants. Ducky really had a big miss opportunity here. They should have made this keyboard hot swappable. This would have undoubtedly made them a top contender in all of compact gaming keyboards. At the very least, they could have offered the Mecha SF with other switch options, like they're finally doing on their other popular keyboards. As for the Cherry MX Blacks, I still did enjoy gaming and typing on them. They're a bit smoother since their latest update, but there's still just a little bit of scratchiness. Moving on to the body and design of the Mecha SF. I'm not lying when I say the Radiant series is truly a sight to behold. The iridescent finish is something I've never seen before on any keyboard. It's like it's two different colors depending on what angle you look at it. The overall design is just like that of the Mecha Mini but with the 65% layout of the 12SF. You get the same rock solid aluminum casing with the floating key design. The body is very sleek and minimalist with thin bezels and soft rounded edges. The Mecha SF size falls somewhere in between the Mecha Mini and the 12SF. It has a length of 325mm, a width of 105mm, and an overall height of 40mm when measuring to the top of the keycap. On my scale, it weighs in at a hefty 895 grams, which is just under 2 pounds. The weight definitely makes it feel like a premium product in your hands. Now one question that I get all the time is, should I get a plastic 1-2 mini or a metal mecha mini? I will never tell anyone to get one over the other. Plastic and metal casings are truly different experiences with different typing feels and sound signatures. It's always a matter of preference, but if you've never typed or gamed on a heavier metal keyboard, I definitely recommend giving it a try. On the bottom of the keyboard, you have two sets of large rubber feet. They protrude quite a bit, are very grippy, and appear to be durable. Just like the Mecha Mini, there is an additional set of flip-out feet, but the typing angle with them is really steep, at nearly 12 degrees, while the regular typing angle is a comfortable 5 degrees. Also on the bottom of the keyboard, you have a little play along the center. It does have a plastic film covering, so let's go ahead and peel that. Here you'll find some Ducky branding and product information, as well as your unique number for this limited edition series. It looks like I have number 1589 out of 2021 pieces. On the back side of the keyboard you have a Type-C USB port next to some unique Ocean branding. It is mildly recessed but should accommodate most of your USB cables. This next feature will surely raise your KD and increase your FPS by at least 10%. 
it's the RGB. If you're a fan of RGB, Ducky's Mecha series is definitely the way to go. Ducky has always had a strong showing with their RGB, and the Mecha SF is no different with its floating key design. The RGB looks absolutely incredible with the transparent top housing on the exposed Cherry MX switches. Even though the limited edition keycaps aren't shine through, the white backplate does a great job at reflecting the lighting and is still very bright. The first mode by default is the classic wave, but you can cycle through the different RGB modes by pressing FN, Alt, and T. There are a total of 10 different modes, which I'll showcase at the end of the video if you're interested. The speed on all of the modes can be adjusted by hitting FN, Alt and J to decrease the speed or L to increase the speed. When it comes to brightness there are 10 levels but you can only adjust them on the last 5 RGB modes. Just like other Ducky keyboards the RGB is highly customizable on board. You can do everything from setting a solid color for the entire keyboard to customizing the lighting per key. The custom lighting per key will even persist through different RGB modes. Next up we have the sound test. I'll spend some more time with the keyboard and I'll give you guys my final impressions. Alright so final impression time. I truly enjoyed my experience with this keyboard. I personally feel that it's performance oriented and caters very well to gamers and typists. Bottoming out can be a bit unforgiving but because there's virtually no give I'm able to push off the keys and input other commands very quickly. Even the stabilizers appear to be geared for performance. I took off the keycaps for a closer look and there's definitely some lube present. It's a light coating and just enough that helps to smooth out the overall feel. A lot of lube or grease will definitely help with rattle but too much of it can make your stabilizers feel sluggish and less responsive. Just like the RGB customization, the Mecha SF can also record macros on board. No need for any software. Since I never use page up and page down, I remapped those keys to home and end respectively, and now the Mecha SF is great for gaming and my workflow. The bottom of the keyboard features a set of four dip switches. You can turn off the Windows key, change rollover modes, turn on a display mode, and change the vendor ID. The Mecha SF is also compatible with console, and it does work with Mac, but it requires a workaround to make it appear as a Apple Magic keyboard. Moving on to my negatives, I'll start with the little ones first. There is just a hint of case ping, but you have to listen very closely to tell. This next thing might be a little bit nitpicky, but I think Ducky should have included a different USB cable. The black rubber looks really tacky next to the special keyboard. I don't think Ducky needed to go all out and include a custom coiled cable, but a cable that was colored, braided, or even just plain white would have paired really well with this limited edition keyboard. Now let's address the elephant in the room. The Mecha SF being offered with only Cherry MX switches is a tragedy. Since the Radiant series is likely the first launch of many for the new Mecha SF, SF, I'm optimistic that other Switch varieties will eventually be offered. But in my opinion, the inclusion of a hot swap feature would have made this a serious contender for the best gaming keyboard. At the very least, it would have been a top keyboard on most people's list. I mentioned this earlier in the review, but if you're big on replacing keycaps, you also need to be mindful of the Mecha SF's non-standard layout, especially that 2U right shift key. Anyway, that's pretty much it for the review, though I really would have liked to try other Switches, the new Ducky Mecha SF is still very impressive and a solid performer. I typically use two different keyboards at any given time, one for gaming and one for productivity. I've been using the Mecha SF for a couple weeks now and I'm very satisfied with its gaming performance, and it's also been serving me well for work and productivity. If you're interested in this keyboard and want to support the channel with your purchase, you can use my creator code LilRiceMuncher at MechanicalKeyboards.com. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, hit that thumbs up button and support the channel by subscribing. For any questions, drop a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you everyone for watching, I'll catch you guys on the next one. I gotta go eat some rice, this is Lil Rice Muncher Gaming, signing off, thanks.